job, Pipestone. Yeah, very good job. Welcome to our third Football Friday of 2016. I'm Mark Ovenden, and he is Zach Borg. Tonight's show brought to you once again by Paul's Place in Canton, and we're covering the region with football highlights tonight. We start at Howard Wood Field, where a pair of Sioux Falls teams met head on. The Roosevelt Rough Riders looking to go three and oh, and these guys looking to make sure it didn't happen. The Lincoln Patriots, they were fired up right away. They were excited right away. They weren't excited for long. Uh, Spoiler alert. Torin Devericks to Carter Karstens, and it's seven nothing on the first drive. On the ensuing kickoff, Lincoln fumbles. The Riders come up with it. You can tell by the referee's signal and by the fans' reaction. Luckily, <laughs> nobody got hurt there. And Devrix goes to the air again, this time to Nathan Barnes. It's 14 to nothing early in the first quarter in favor of Rosie. Still in the first quarter, it's Devrix again on third and goal. Instead Great of throwing, run. nobody was open. He runs it. And number one takes it in. It's 21 to nothing. Kim Nelson liking that. He's also liking how well his defense plays. Watch this. Carter Lohr oh. goes up and snags it away from the receiver. A great pick. And, you know, what haven't we shown you yet? We haven't shown you a sack. Demario wow. Hester with a sack. They scored again right before halftime on a one-yard plunge. I'm not going to show that. They go on to win. 49-7. <laughs> to seven. Wow. And Washington was up 34-0 in the first quarter. They went 41-7. to seven. Uh, Stevens knocked off Aberdeen 16-14 and Brandon Valley O'Gorman play tomorrow night. That is the 38th Dakota Bowl at Howard Wood Field at 8 o'clock. Mitchell Colonels hitting the road after an impressive win over Yankton last Friday at Watertown tonight. As usual, it was a defensive game in the first quarter, scoreless into the second. Keel Nelson with a pass complete to Connor Morgan deep into Arrows territory. And who else is going to put it in for the Colonels but Spencer Negebauer makes it 7 to nothing in the second quarter. Watertown trying to get something going by themselves. Alex Gower to Shane Gonnelly. And they're driving down into the infield dirt. You don't see that too much on football fields anymore. But Gower going to be picked off by Negabauer. He can Who do else? it on the defensive yeah. side, too, as Mitchell gets the victory by a final of 17 to 7. Here on all over Sturgis, 51 to 14. Douglas with a close win over Brookings. And of course, the Tiger Bowl tomorrow is Harrisburg host Pierre. Now in Hartford, a rematch of the last two 11A title games for the defending champion Madison Bulldogs trying to improve to 3-0, and, and they sure look good in this one. Grant Lenneman's pass deflected by Jackson Yonke, and Noah Goosey picks it off. No score, but there will be. Josh wow, Giles throws pretty. it high, and Yonke ends up with it, gets it down near the goal line. They would score to make it 6 to nothing. the point after no good. Still in the second quarter now, it's going to be Giles again. Throwing to Jaden Yonke. Uh, he's going to cut it in for the score. That makes it 12 to nothing. They've got three Yankees at linebacker on defense. So the PA night, guy, all, the all, all the PA guy has to do is say tackle by Yonke. <laughs> uh, there's Jaden again on the long pass, getting it down near the goal line. They go up 19 nothing at halftime. Madison looking really good. 32 to nothing, the victor. West Central lost its opener at Dakota Valley. That's where the T Titans play tonight, and the Titans moving it well early. Peyton Conrad to Carter Slykus. Nice move for a 19-yard gain down to the 40-yard line. T going to go for it on fourth down and seven from the 37. But their pass is incomplete. Good coverage by Luke Schmidt for Dakota Valley to deny the first down. But T gets it right back and tries Schmidt again on fourth down. And I promise you it's going to be a little blurry. Well, actually, that's the next play. This gets picked off by the Panthers. Schmidt again making a great defensive play. Schmidt can also throw two on fourth and four. He goes 33 yards up top to Luke Johnson. I promise this is a touchdown. Gets a little blurry. Dakota Valley had the lead, but T goes on to get the victory 28 to 14. Now, we, we decided whoever got to this game first yeah. would do the highlights, and you got there and first. And it was. It was Beersford, Sioux Falls, Christian. <laughs> Beersford had to play here because of bad field positions in Beersford, and well, Sioux Falls Christian was not exactly accommodating hosts. That's Joel DeHay with the sack. Christian takes over. Fourth and 15. Don't see this a lot. Sawyer Prince through the air. Great catch by Mitchell Goodberry. And that makes it a first down on the next play. Riley Hogan cuts back and gets into the end zone. Sioux Falls Christian undefeated. They win 40-7. Yeah, they threw a pass there. Yeah. They usually run all the time. The Mustangs of Tri-Valley. Back home tonight against a neighboring rival from Del Rapids, trying to improve to 3-0 to start the season. And that's Tanner Heim barreling in to make it a 28-6 lead for Del Rapids. Trivelli came into this game undefeated. 
Ensuing kickoff, Landon Freeman finds a gap. He is going, he is going, he is going. He's a free he man. He is caught. Oh. And wouldn't you know it, the defense of Del Rapids would uh, stand up strong. Stingy. They shut down four straight plays by the Mustangs. They do not score. And then in the fourth quarter, it's going to be Del Rapids again. The icing on the cape. It's Matt Gologli with a finishing blow for the Coyers. They look really good tonight. They've had a roller coaster season so far. Look good tonight. Your final 35 to 6. Well, in nine man, one of the teams trying to dethrone Woolsey Westington in 9AA is Chester. Tonight, the Flyers hosting Baltic. It turned into a classic, but it was kind of ugly early on. Joe Hoyland pounces on a Baltic fumble. Big hit right there. But later in the first, Caden Wolf going to jump on a fumble of his own, dueling turnovers, and we are scoreless. The Flyers would get things going with this halfback pass I love to it. Cade Larson. Pulling out the bag of tricks. Nice grab down inside the five yard line. Larson's then going to boot a 30 yard field goal. Gives Chester a 3 0 advantage. Baltic trying to answer. Reese Varney going to go left and then reverse down the right sideline. Nicely done. He's got a big time gain. A little bit later in the drive. Varney going to do it one more time. No changing course on this next run as he's going to reach the goal line for the score. Look how good this game got late. It was 8-3 after he scored here. Baltic with a three-point win, a late score, 28-25. Chester's had several close scores like that. On to Pipestone. And a game that promised plenty of fireworks here. Jackson County Central against uh, Pipestone. Here's Easton Barr rolling Ooh. out, throwing to Nico Ferroni, who grabs it. Goes in for the touchdown, 6-0 Husky. Second quarter, Pipestone just before the half ends. It's going to be Cody Thompson hooking up with Mitchell Carson. And number three, is he going to score? I say yes. That's got to be a They score. said he was out of oh, bounds, and they on. did score right before halftime. That's so it's 6-6. Six, six. Second half, Pipestone's uh, Cody Thompson again throws it right. Jackson County's Jacob Christopher. He takes it the other way for the pick six. 40 yards and it's 13 to six. And then it's gonna be Dalton Wagner for the Huskies. He takes it in in the third quarter from two yards out. 19 to six, Jackson yeah. County Central. But Pipestone would get two more touchdowns from McKinley Bush. He had three of them. They closed to within 19, 18. They go for the win, the two point conversion and don't get it. Your final in the game oh. of the night, Jackson County Central wins 19 to 18. On to Iowa, Jay Rosenboom's West Lion Wildcats trying to improve to 3 0 with Okaboji Milford in town. Look Opening at that drive. Sky, too. What a yeah. beautiful night. Just, just like two weeks ago in the Beef Bowl, Jaden Snyder to Mike Meyer was kind of afraid I was going to get hit there, but he got the ball nonetheless, 7 to nothing. By the way, Snyder's brother Brandon starting tomorrow for the Iowa Hawkeyes against Iowa State. Next possession, some ground and pound. Noah Van Hoff, 10 tough yards for the score. It's 14 to nothing. Okaboji trying to get back into this thing. Matt Eckerd dropping back and throwing a deep ball for Brandon Svoboda, who comes up with it, but the Pioneers miss a field goal. That's really as close as they could get all night. In the second quarter, Dylan Heiser burrows in to make it 21 0. All West Lion as they win 48 to nothing. Why didn't you show the touchdown? I thought we had a lower third. <laughs> Forgot we had the full screen. He did score there, by the yeah. way. You know, his parents yeah, was are going to be really mad run. that you called for the scoreboard there. Gosh. <laughs> Madison shut out West Central 32 to nothing. Uh, Chamberlain, we had a lot of one sided games tonight. Chamberlain 51 0. Great Plains Luther wins 14 to 6. Wolsey Westington over Arlington Lake Preston 52 to nothing. Langford 62 to 8. Uh, Corsica Stickney 52 to nothing. Castlewood Esteline 54 to nothing. Scotland 52 to nothing. Bridgewater Emory Ethan 50 to nothing. Yikes. Del Rapids 35 6. There's your wound socket. Weston and Springs Sanborn Central win by 21 points. Look, those were good games. Yeah. Del Rapids St. Mary's wins by two. And Baltic, you saw the highlights, wins by three. Coleman Egan wins by 30. They're having a good year. Canton, Canton shut, out. shut out. Lennox tonight. T area wins uh, over Dakota Valley. Sioux Falls Christian 40 to 7. Minnesota 59 to 16. Dawson Boyd in a low scoring game there. Adrian 29 21. Byberg Hurley wins over Trip Delmont Armor. Edgemont 6 to 2. What? Cleveland 35 to 34 over Hills hmm. Beaver Creek. That was a thriller. Canastota beats Howard. Gregory over Bonham. It was Groton area having a fine year as well. So is Millbank with a pair of shutouts nice there. Parkston beats uh, Vermilion. St. Thomas Moore 28 to nothing. Warner 54 to nothing. Winner 54 to nothing. I don't see anybody beating Winner, by I don't the know way. I going to score on Winner. Webster's really good this year. Laverne, 40 to nothing. Hamlin, 61 to 6. Uh, Hanson, 44 to 32. And I believe this is our last page. Britton Heckler beats Clark Willow Lake, 
14 to 8. That's the football Friday version of our show. Nice job. Nice job. We got some college volleyball after the break.